most of my regular subscribers should know by now that I am a massive Star Trek fan and I thought it was time for me to do a little bit more Star Trek stuff rather than just reviewing the latest Picard episode or whatever like that. There's plenty of other channels that do that already, okay? So I thought it might be fun to kind of draw out the Star Trek universe on paper with my Sharpie, okay? And I wanted to kind of just draw it out to make sense of it for anybody who is interested. If you're not interested, then hopefully this ASMR video and the soft sounds that you hear will be pleasing and relaxing anyway. So, yes, so Star Trek is something very close to my heart. Um, I've often joked, not really joked, but said that it's the closest thing I have to a philosophy or a religion. So. Let's just get started with it. So, um, Star Trek began a long time ago in 1966 with a show that we all call the original series. Now, it only ran for like three years. It only ran until 69. Okay. And actually, the fans brought it back. It was going to get cancelled. And they got it back for like one more season, I believe. Now, it had a massive impact at the time. Everything, everybody knows about it, even if you're not a Star Trek fan. It's just become pretty much legendary, right? So, after the original series. There's a, another show which I only saw bits of when I was a kid with the reruns called the animated series. Now it was never, as far as I know, it was never really considered canon. Okay, I believe the show was made in 1973 or thereabouts I think it only ran for one season two it was never considered canon I think so I'm putting it off to the side however in a recent episode of Star Trek Picard they made reference to something in this show which a lot of people now think has made it canon inside the universe so whether that was true or not I don't know now success of the original show and then they made the animated series they started making movies and there was one which was Star Trek the motion picture and this was the most expensive movie ever made at the time in 1979 it was riding on the success of Star Wars from 1977 and they thought they could make a big budget science fiction movie which was cost even more money than Star Wars, but it didn't do so well. It's long and slow, and it's come to, it's kind of became appreciated over time. Generally speaking, it's considered kind of one of the poorer versions, and I tend to agree. Then, so let's just start with this one, the motion picture, okay? Long, slow, and expensive, with a fairly complex plot. The next movie was cheaper, probably the cheapest, with a simple story. And it is considered one of the greatest movies of all time. Not just one of the greatest Star Trek movies of all time, but one of the greatest star movies of all time. And it's been referenced many, many times. And that is Star Trek 2 The Wrath of Khan. And if you're not a Star Trek fan, and you haven't 
seen Star Trek 2 The Wrath of Khan I highly recommend it and I think I heard recently that I haven't verified this but I heard recently that that was kind of considered their last chance for the show for the movies but it did so well they of course made number 3 which was a good movie Search for Spock. Number four, that's right, the one with the whales, um, which was a massive success. And then came number five, which we generally don't speak about. We'll just pretend that that one doesn't exist, okay? Then came number six, which was an awesome, awesome movie too. Star Trek 6, The Undiscovered. time brings us right up to a period which I will refer to as pretty much refer to as the golden age of Star Trek this was where many people consider the original vision from here really fulfilled its final form, if you like, when it came to the next generation, Star Trek, the next generation, which kicked off in 1987, so that's what, what, 18 years, a big 18 year gap there between shows, but now, 987 actually falls round about here on the movie production but I'll just for tidy sake I thought I'd just do it like that from TNG Next Generation Captain Picard the crew of the Enterprise D um, was a show well ahead of its time and I think it really still encapsulates the the, vi the original vision of a diverse, multi-ethnic, multi-species crew of people solving problems without just resorting to violence or anything like that. Although sometimes force was needed. I apologize for the background noise, by the way. There's always a truck or a Honda going. generation was I feel like seven seasons seven years worth of just great great stories plenty of duds plenty of cheesy episodes but just incredible stories this this was when I grew up actually I grew up with the reruns so because I would have been um, nine years old when it started so I was more like 12 or 13 when I started watching it. So I would have been watching the reruns in 1992, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97 and so on. Because um, I was a few years behind. But during this time we also had overlap shows. DS9, Deep Space Nine, being in a way my favourite show was very different. It introduced a lot more conflict, darker themes to balance out the somewhat shinier utopia of the next generation. But at the same time we had another show, Voyager, which kind of went back a little bit with the next generation in terms of its values and set on a starship. Because the S9 set on a space station, so it's much more static. The challenge with that show was that most of the stories had to come to them. Whereas the, sh the ship would always go to the stories in the other shows. So DS9, Voyager, that basically takes you all the way up to 2000. This was just the golden age as far as I'm concerned. 
this is the, I mean, and no disrespect to the original, but this was the, this is my, this is what I grew up with, this is where, this is where I learned right from wrong. <laughs> this is where all the social messages, all the ethnic um, dilemmas, the social dilemmas, the diplomatic problems that we have to solve, all came to me from here. This is where I learned about gender. This is where I learned about the death penalty. This is where I learned about um, cultural diversity and its limits. Um, diplomacy. Um, sometimes having to break your own rules to get stuff done, but staying true to your values as much as you can, it was all right here. And the cool thing about it too was there was overlap. And by the way, yes, this is all political. It always has been for anybody who's wondering. So, just about the time TNG finished, there was a movie called Generations. That was happening while DS9 was on. And then they got their second movie, First Contact. And then it was quite a while before they managed to fund the final movie. And it wasn't brilliant, but it was good. Oops. Nemesis. And that was in 2002. That was the last time that we saw Card, crew, the Enterprise, although it was a newer ship, because the Enterprise D was destroyed in that movie, so then it was the Enterprise E, which everyone loves. And I loved the D, the D was the best, everybody loves the D, okay. So, um, yeah, this is the production then move up to after Voyager finished there was a gap of a few months and in 2001 we got a new show called Enterprise Star Trek Enterprise which always had an issue with the name of it, it was, I was just trying to capitalise on the name of the ship and I was I, they could have called it something else but whatever that's what it's called I left Scotland round about <laughs> this time and I never got a chance to watch it properly the first time round and I kind of disregarded it a little bit and I rediscovered it years later and now I love, love, love this show so much uh, except the intro theme tune Now, it got cancelled. This lasted for seven seasons. DS9 lasted for seven seasons. Voyager lasted for seven seasons. Enterprise only made it to four. Which was a real, real shame. Now, we have a gap. sure how to draw this because it's a production and they both are in production at the same time so I'm just gonna make it look as though they're overlapped a little bit because Discovery came first and then we have Picard and this is the show that if you follow my tweets you know I keep on talking about all the time and I also did a, a little video on it a few weeks ago when it premiered so this is the production of my timeline and between Enterprise and Discovery, Discovery came on in 2017 and Picard is in 2020 so we're talking oh and Enterprise went off the air in 05 so you're talking a gap of 12 years 
So I think, uh, for those of you who wonder why things look different in the show, I think it's fair to say um, there's an 18 year gap here when things really changed. You know, the old uniforms and then the new ones. And then we kind of go back to a old school style here, which matched a lot of that, admittedly, which was great. But then we have 12 year gap. Now we all know how the world's changed in the last 12, 15 years. So I have no issue with the fact that this show looks very different. Because then this one looks kind of as we did expect. I'll keep confusing matters now. So that is the, I guess the production timeline. And it keeps on going and there's more shows coming so that's pretty cool. Now, I thought I would then translate this for you. Oh, one more thing. Hang on a second, I forgot one. Right here we have the reboot movies in 09. In fact, a lot of people refer to the movie itself as Star Trek 09 because it doesn't have a name. It's just Star Trek. Or the one with Chris Pine. And then after that, Into Darkness. And then after that, Beyond. Now, we're not sure if there's going to be more of these, of this chain of movies. Although we kind of hope so. I kind of hope so. I'm sure a lot of people are quite happy if this doesn't continue. That's another whole other video. <laughs> okay. So let's translate all of this into the in-universe timeline. So this is the So, of all of these, what came first? Well, that's easy. It's one that takes place probably about 150 years from right now. Actually, less than that. And that was... value of discovery is so high and things look very very modern that some people find it hard to position it in this period because what comes next certainly looks different with its 1966 production values and toothpaste knobs and stuff like that for buttons so, to be fair, there's a massive difference between this and this, even though this comes right before this. And in fact, there may even be a little bit of overlap um, with Pike, Captain Pike. But this was 66, and this is 2017. So, production. series. Then it's TNG, Next Generation. Then we have DS9. And then we have Voyager. And then we have what we have right now, Next 
next episode comes out tomorrow. Picard. That. So, should I go into that? Yeah, well, let me just explain these movies, the Chris Pine movies, for anybody who's not sure. So, round about here, in the timeline of the in-universe timeline, a sun explodes. That's a sun explosion. Now, there's a little bit of confusion about what is... Basically, it's the Romulan sun, okay? But in um, background material, it suggests there was one called the Hobus star. And this star goes supernova, and it causes um, massive galactic... Not galactic, but kind of regional damage to multiple star systems. Now, normal supernovas wouldn't do that, but, you know, it's sci-fi, right? And the idea is that the, the shockwave will travel through subspace at transwarp speeds and stuff like that. Anyway, an event happens here, and without spoiling it, Spock, who originally, originally comes from here, but still alive here, because they live for hundreds of years, is thrown back in time... to, let's say, here, between Discovery and the original series, where he, or not so much he, but the events that he is part of cause a disruption in the timeline and create a new timeline, kind of like in Back to the Future, okay? That is where the original Star, uh, the Star Trek movie with Chris Pine Star Trek 09 plus goes on now I'm going to write it here because I'm running out of space this is called the Calvin timeline So that's the Kelvin timeline. And all the movies take place right about here. In fact, the last movie takes place at the beginning. Um, oh no, it's a, a year or two into their five-year mission. So anyway, let's just say... Oh, I've run out of space. Let's just say that the movies take place oh nine into darkness and beyond they take place here in a separate timeline but we only ever explore that timeline to this point so we have no idea what happens with Next Generation Captain Picard DS9 Captain Cisco Voyager Captain Janeway and so on and so forth none of that's explored this is called Prime this is called the Prime Timeline. Alright. Production timeline and universe timeline. And that is all I have to say about that. I hope I have completely either baffled you or wowed you with my Star Trek knowledge. Maybe I've made a mistake somewhere, but I don't think so. But I'd love to hear from other Star Trek fans or anyone. What do you think about this? Did I make things simpler? Or did I just confuse you even more? I would like to make a special mention to my patrons who support Sharpies really go through, don't they? So, uh, actually, I'm going to use my other pen. Let's see. I'm going to dedicate this to my patrons right here. Alicia Goff. Anil. 
Richards Ember Chantal Biscop Chris You'll find it. I have lots of behind the scenes stuff and a bunch of exclusive videos and concept videos, that sort of thing. So, um, 